even and sustainable development of the Niger Delta into a region that is economically prosperous, socially stable, ecologically regenerative, and politically peaceful. The Commission's mandate area is comprised of the nine oil producing states of Abia, Akwaibom, Bayosa, Cross River, Delta, Edo, Imo, Ondo, and Rivers. Sadly, while the NDDC has a comprehensive master plan and hundreds of billions of naira have been spent over the past 20 years, there is little on ground to justify the investment. How come we don't have legacy projects in Niger Delta to show? I think these are the concerns of Mr. President. And he decided that the Ministry of Niger Delta at first should exercise uh, a more, a his own authority, the supervising authority, the controlling authority and see how we can do everything to help this major commission to go take the people of the Niger Delta to the next level. It has been a sad story of monumental corruption and financial impunity in the conduct of awarding contracts and execution of projects. A tragic story of financial recklessness and profligacy as many see the commission as a cash cow. Normally, once you have a contract in NDDC, it is like you have won a lottery. A contract, a contract that they will award to you in NDDC for 700 million, you can use 10 or 20 million to do it. It has been two decades marked by the determination of a cartel who plundered the resources of the oil rich Niger Delta, leaving the indigents poorer. Lately, the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, has come under strong criticism for a glaring failure to achieve the mandate for which it was established. Despite the huge funds made available to the agency to enable it function optimally, the insinuation of corrupt practices at the commission is a familiar tune on the lips of stakeholders and various interest groups in the region. One of such groups is the Citizens' Quest for Truth Initiative, a non-governmental organization based in the Niger Delta region and led by a Niger Delta activist, Obiaruku Christi Ndukwe. The group has been in the forefront of the clamor for the sanitization of the NDDC to meet its mandate. The Citizens' Quest for Truth initiative is determined to unmask the tendencies established long ago by the cartel that has routinely preyed on the fortunes of the Niger Delta Development Commission. The seemingly injudicious application of funds from the federal government and other sources expectedly necessitated a presidential intervention last October when President Mohamed Buhari ordered for the forensic audit of the operations of the commission from inception to date with a view to sanitizing and repositioning the commission for greater efficiency. Lead consultants have also uh, come on board and at the moment we are now trying to bring out the forensic auditors and then each uh, state of the Niger Delta is a lot. We have about nine lots in that section and then the headquarters is also a lot, that makes it ten. And so uh, we have already set up uh, centers in the ten locations for verification, evaluation and documentation of all IPCs and, uh, and all award letters in terms of contracts so that we know the contingent and actual liabilities of the NDDC. At the end of this exercise, the federal government hopes to have a bankable NDDC where the balance sheet could go to the bank and be, and, and be accepted and then and could bring value in terms of industrialization uh, to the region. And at the same time, we also hope to complete the over 9,000 projects that are lying fallow at the moment in the Niger Delta region for the benefit of the people. In January 2020, the president, in another bold step, officially informed the Senate of the decision to vet the books of the NDDC. Although a governing board had been approved by the Senate at the time, President Mohamed Buhari needed to make the senators understand the need for an interim management committee to work with the auditors so as to avail a substantive board, a clean state, to kickstart their tenure. To ensure a seamless operation, the President, on 19 February 2020, approved the enlargement of the Interim Management Committee, consisting of Professor Kimebra Dikumo Daniel Ponde as Acting Managing Director, Ibanga Basi Etang as Acting Executive Director of Finance and Administration, and Dr. Kairu Ojogbo, Acting Executive Director Projects, 
with Caroline Nagbo and Cecilia Bukola Akintomide as members. Additionally, President Mohamedou Buhari on March 10th inaugurated the advisory committee of the NDDC made up of nine governors of the Niger Delta states. Two additional members, the Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs and the Minister of the Environment Ministry, were added with the charge by the presidency for them to bring responsible leadership to bear on the affairs of the commission. The Presidential Monitoring Committee will report to me and will be chaired by the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs. Its members are drawn from various MDAs and will focus on monitoring operations and activities of the Commission. In the same vein, the inauguration of the Niger Delta Development Advisory Committee today is in line with the provision of Section 11.1 of the NDDC Establishment Act. This committee is charged with the responsibility of advising the board and monitoring its activities. The advisory committee comprises the nine governors of the Niger Delta region. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Goswil Obot Akbabio, who is also the supervising minister for the Niger Delta Development Commission during the inauguration formalities, had tasked the enlarged interim management committee to cooperate with forensic auditors to audit the operations of the commission as directed by President Muhammad Buhari. Heeding the call of duty and in consonance with the huge confidence reposed in the interim management committee by the presidency and other critical stakeholders, the Ponde-led crack team had hit the ground running in the onerous task of sanitizing the operations of the agency. We need to change from the way things are done. There will be a radical review of quite a number of things, especially those that have been done wrongly. I don't know about quality assurance or quality improvement in the Niger Delta Development Commission, I want to believe it exists because you must have measurable performance indicators in every unit and in every department. On Tuesday, 21st of April, a new angle was introduced into the probe of the Commission with the invitation of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to be part of the forensic audit being undertaken by the Interim Management Committee. It is believed that the injection of fresh blood and new ideas into the operations of the Commission is already beginning to yield tangible benefit aimed at refocusing the Niger Delta Development Commission on the path of progress for a better overall service delivery. The unfolding scenario would see the EFCC availing the Commission of its status reports on all its investigation reports on cases involving the interventionist agency. This is a courageous step in the probe process, which could send jitters into the spines of the defaulting contractors and the cartel that had routinely preyed on the fortunes of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Apart from inspiring hope in the heart of stakeholders, the move is also sending a strong warning signal to the errant contractors and those who were opposed to the forensic audit that it may not be business as usual anymore. It would appear that the time to give account has come, perhaps sooner than expected. I'm the executive director of projects. I took my time. We have to verify. We have to inspect them. I took, I took my time. I went from state to state. Everything, I recorded it. And which, where, which, whenever it is satisfied that you have done work that merits payment, we will, we will pay you. And we were not paying as they used to pay. So the contractors are very angry. It was Africa's finest wordsmith and master storyteller, Chinua Achebe of Blessed Memory, who said that those who bring home an infested firewood must be prepared for the visit of lizards. Those who are afraid of the visit of the lizards are fighting tooth and nail to avoid being brought to book. I state categorically without fear of anybody that the 2019 budget was frustrated for personal reasons of some people in the National Assembly 
and also the unwarranted probes that they have gone to bring up is to make mockery of the forensic audits. Since the president ordered for a forensic audit of the commission to ascertain the veracity of the allegations and claims made against several managements without minding whose ox is God, all hell has been let loose. Whether the people of the Niger Delta benefit or not is not their concern. They are not taking into consideration the fact that there has been not one single project that's been commissioned by the president in this region. The petitions and court cases increased astronomically as the aggrieved personnel that were recently transferred out of the commission's headquarters for non-interference to the forensic audit have regrouped and fighting back for their dear lives. When the IMC came in with a mandate to drive the forensic audit, you must be well aware that they will have enemies. You know, there are people who have unjustly benefit, benefited from this system who will be brought to book and then the people fighting back. The aggrieved personnel are fighting back through sponsoring of agitations, protests and engaging professional propagandists to ridicule the good vision of President Muhammadu Buhari of repositioning the commission for greater efficiency. Their aim is to distract and or distort the forensic auditors, call for the scrapping of the interim management committee and get the commission back to its old ways of doing things. Kando went to LNG, statutory payments from LNG and claimed that they were the ones who initiated the payment, which is not true. And Kando belongs to a member of the National Assembly, Senate of the National Assembly. And the, 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 the letter here says that they collected $28 million and then exchanged it for $360. As at that time, the, the, the exchange rate was not $360, and the, the central bank was exchanging it for $225 uh, naira per dollar. And at the end of the day, they asked for 20% uh, of the $28 million, and they were paid. They wanted to continue. Senator Akpabio said, no, this is a fraud against Nigeria. And heavens were let loose. They claim that this is the money they use to work in the National Assembly and in Abuja. If there is going to be a, a contest in the National Assembly, this is where, according to the chairman, this is where they source the money. We got a letter from one of the committees of the National Assembly asking the forensic auditors to be part of our team to appear before they approve. That is totally unacceptable and cannot be done. The lead forensic auditors are not subject to us and we cannot command them. We are just, we are not part of the forensic auditors. We do not supervise them. We only provide the enabling environment for them to conduct the forensic audit. And we also provide requisite information when they need it. Most of the documents that they are asking us to bring for those uh, phantom probes are things that we have already given to the forensic auditors. That's why they're asking the forensic auditors to join our team. I don't think I have uh, the powers to command the forensic auditors that I did not appoint. What a pity, indeed. A guilty conscience is the mother of invention. The chairman has committee on, 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 on the NDDC. Came up to us. And I give you an example. This is proof. He brought out a, 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 he brought out a, a, a training program. Emergency training program for 6.4 trillion. For 6.4 billion. And said that, we, that he has met the first milestone that he needs us to pay him 3.7 billion. We said, look, this milestone you are talking about, the file is here. We said, look, this milestone you are talking about cannot be paid because you have not done it. He said the job belongs to the speaker. We said we were not paying. So we went to meet the speaker. The speaker said he is not aware of such a thing. Then it was not in the budget at all. When they now passed the 2019 budget, the chairman house committee now included it, an emergency project and line by line items that we must pay the money. We said we are not paying. Now they are talking about 40 billion. 
that we have expended 40 billion or we have stolen 40 billion how can that be possible it is also no longer a hidden truth that majority of these civil servants pay allegiance to their benefactors through which majority of them were employed and transferred to the so-called cash cow commission you should get worried that i'm the one here if any of you is not worried then there's a problem we'll do a forensic analysis and audit we will try to go backwards even from the year 2000 up to now to know the words we came in what went out and why we have not seen much on ground we will stop you from doing politically motivated roads where you just go down even on black soil you will go and pour asphalt and then commission it and the first rain that comes you wash it away we will try to stop you from keeping your your headquarters for 20 years mm. since the days of AK also mm. without commissioning it up to you now and yet the money that come in and go out even on where Mayor Water Heisen could have finished that building a long time ago will stop you from paying 200 to 300 million a year as a rent on the headquarters you are staying I thought you should be ashamed of that to be able to, to be paying the state government over 200 to 300 million a year am I right? No for your headquarters building, when you could have completed where you are and moving. For the 19 years period under review, this cartel had controlled the reins of power in the commission, as such have systematically entrenched a chain of supply of contracts, both real and inflated, and sometimes imaginary and non-existing to their own benefit, while the aided workers were rewarded with promotion and other benefits. When we got to uh, the NDDC, we met a letter. The letter from the minister of the Niger Delta, stopping a consultancy arrangement given to two firms. One, Star, uh, Starline. Starline was, to, was, was collecting uh, revenue, or Ill, it was illegally collecting uh, revenue on behalf of the NDDC for statutory payments, and they were earning one billion naira every month. When the minister came in, he was asked, the, minister, the, the company Starline invited the minister to join in the fraud. The minister said no, and immediately asked for the stoppage, and this is the letter here, directing the commission to stop that consultancy. They have a huge financial war chest, dubiously acquired through the commission to prosecute their media attacks against whoever stands in their way, coupled with the backing of the powerful members of this cartel who allegedly paid their way to control the committees in charge of the NDDC and the Niger Delta affairs at the National Assembly. Between 2016 and 2019, Emergency contracts of over two trillion were awarded under the supervision of the chairman of both committees, and this is the list of the of the awardees, and this is how they were all distributed. In this list, the chairman senior committee, on behalf of the senate, and when we asked the senior members, they didn't know. They said they don't know. He collected one thousand of those jobs and said he was going to give it to the senate. The records are there. These, these 1,000 uh, uh, contracts were collected by a, a man called Nelson Abamuchi on behalf of the Senate. The rot in the headquarters of the commission cannot be linked only to some senior staff members of the commission without a mention of the ongoing ceaseless sleaze perpetuated by those who ought to oversee the working of the place. In 2018, a contract was awarded for $3.7 uh, billion. The contract was for the supply of chairs, plastic chairs and tables to, Niger Delta, to uh, schools in Niger Delta. The, the contract was awarded to a senator. To a senator. The senator, the, the same commission that awarded the contract, now gave a stores, requisition, a stores re re receipt to say that this is the, 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 the point, the place where these chairs and tables were supplied to. And what is the address? The address is Akwede Aquis Bini Express Way, 
Opanam, before witchcraft, witch, uh, witch tech aluminum company. Who owns this uh, store? Where NDDC supposedly supplied the, 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 the chest to? This matter is already before the police. There is a guilty conscience behind every brazen word and act and behind every manifestation of self-righteousness. If the traducers were ever in doubt about the determination of the Interim Management Committee to change the narrative of the Long-Suffering Commission, the recent events in and around the agency would have put paid to such misgivings. The National Assembly will not be deterred from doing its work. We owe our loyalty to the Nigerian people. And as a committee, we owe our loyalty to the people of the Niger Delta that have been deprived over the years. And we say this time around, we must have a commission that will work, not just for the people, it must work for everybody in the Niger Delta. As senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and as legislators, we have a right to appropriate. It is a constitutional right. And that constitutional right, no amount of intimidation or blackmail will stop us from exercising it. It's an orchestrated plot to frustrate the efforts of the ruling APC government under President Muhammadu Buhari from developing the region. While the NDDC may be getting back on track, after the audit of the 20-year period, there are still issues that must be resolved before the president can get it right. What we plead with Nigerians and plead with the uh, speaker and senior president to allow the forensic audit to take its course. For those proponents, calling for the scrapping of the commission due to its rot is like throwing the baby out with the bath water. We cannot afford to eliminate something good when trying to get rid of something bad. Chief Dr. Edwin Clark has backed the Forensic Audit and the Interim Management Committee and called on the leadership of the National Assembly to, as a matter of urgency, investigate those grievous allegations leveled against its members. Let me say this. The Speaker and the, and, and the President, President are not aware of what the Chairman of the Committees are doing in the National Assembly. And members of the committee are not also aware. It is just a one-man squad only. Those two committees have put the National Assembly in very bad light, whilst we know the majority of the people in the Senate and in the House of Reps had no knowledge of what these two committees were doing to them. All the faults lay in those two committees, which operate as one-man committees, because even members of those committees are not aware of all these efforts that are being done to rape the destiny of the Niger Delta people, to set the Niger Delta people backwards. The reinvigorated Niger Delta Development Commission is poised to realize the mandate of pulling the Niger Delta region out of the social, economic, environmental, and political problems that have plagued the region. Can you believe it that since the inception of this uh, uh, NDDC, there's no 10 kilometers of dry large roads anywhere in the Niger Delta. Companies like Julius Berger have never been engaged to do work in the Niger Delta. So when the minister came on board, he has an idea. He said what he did in, uh, in Akwaibon, he wants to replicate it. In order to do that, we needed to, to bring in contractors and expertise that can deliver projects and quality to the Niger Delta. And that is what uh, the people who want to take over the, the NDDC uh, do not want. The hope of Senator Akpabio to see the intervention agency build hospitals, provide light to communities in darkness, support industrialization and food sufficiency in the Niger Delta region could well be realized. The march to a new dawn also offers a glimmer of hope to the governments of the oil-producing member states of Abia, Akwaibom, Bayosa, Cross River, Delta, Edo, Imo, Ondo and rivers to drive development in the region. These are the new realities at the Niger Delta Development Commission. We will no longer tolerate this criminal exploitation of our resources. All hands must be on deck to support the forensic audit by Mr. President and the Interim Management Committee, IMC. 
to sanitize the NDDC. It is now or never. Brother, love it and give it.